Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm Jason Aiken. This video should be going up Thursday night, August 22nd, 2013. Which means H.P. Lovecraft's birthday was only a few days ago, on August 20th. To celebrate the birthday of one of the best-known pulp writers, I will be discussing his collaboration with escape artist and magician Harry Houdini. The story is known as Under the Pyramids. It is also known as Entombed with the Pharaohs and Imprisoned with the Pharaohs. From what I read about this story, Houdini provided the idea for the tale, and Lovecraft ghostwrote the whole thing after doing a lot of Egyptian research at the Metropolitan Library and Museum. The story first appeared in the May-June-July 1924 issue of Weird Tales magazine, and it was also the cover story. This issue celebrated the 50th issue of Weird Tales and contained 50 distinct novels, short stories, and novelettes. I'm sure this original issue is quite pricey, but I would be interested in owning this issue in some format, whether it be reprint, or electronic. It just sounds like it would be an interesting read, and I bet there's a lot of cool stories in there. I can tell you firsthand that this tale in particular is pretty cool. It is told from Houdini's perspective as he vacations with his wife in Egypt in 1910. The style of the story, though, is completely Lovecraft in nature. The pacing, the descriptions, and the vocabulary, they're all there. This is so Lovecraft that I found myself picturing him instead of Houdini throughout the story. Lovecraft's style is just that strong. He sets the stage in the opening pages with Egyptian historical information during the daylight hours when the Houdinis are going on their tour of the pyramids and the Sphinx, and that type of thing. But when night falls, the story really begins to pick up. Houdini is tricked into witnessing a boxing match between his guide and another local on top of the Great Pyramid. Once the duel ends, it turns out the whole thing was a ruse to lure him out into the night. He is abducted by his guide, and the rest of the locals. Then he is blindfolded and tied up. He is then lowered down a deep hole by rope, while still tied up and blindfolded. The depth of the hole is inhuman, and this causes Houdini to go through a few fits of madness due to the supernatural aspects of the descent. He can envision the country of Egypt itself as a huge yellow paw, that is tormenting him. Eventually he is lowered to the bottom, and an impossible amount of rope falls onto Houdini, and he feels like he's drowning in it, which leads to another fit of madness. This fit isn't his last. The rest of the story is his attempt to escape from the underground passage back into the Egyptian night. Lovecraft goes into a lot of detail about human-animal hybrid mummies and their two necrotic rulers. He also describes the being that is the true basis of the Sphinx. The description of this being is pure Lovecraft in nature. It would be right at home in the Cthulhu mythos, and it just might well be. This is an awesome story. Lovecraft throws in some historical context, a good bit at the beginning, but it all comes back around in the end in the form of weird fiction. Just the kind you want to read about in a magazine called Weird Tales. I really enjoyed it, and I highly recommend reading it. Evidently, Houdini really liked this story as well, because Lovecraft would later ghostwrite a few other projects for him. Check the show notes for more details on those. It should also be noted, Lovecraft was not the only pulp author who Houdini had ghostwrite for him. 
Walter Gibson of the Shadow fame also wrote some projects as Harry Houdini. In the show notes, I'll also link to a website where you can read Under the Pyramids for free. I would recommend copy and pasting it into a document and enlarging the font, then printing it out. I read the story on my Nexus 7 tablet, and while I enjoyed it that way, I felt the font was a little small. Given how prominently a role Houdini plays in this story, at the end of this episode I have added a few sound files of Houdini and his wife. The sound file of Houdini is the only one known to exist, and the recording is currently in David Copperfield's collection. Well, that's it for this week. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Happy birthday to H.P. Lovecraft, and we'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, in introducing my original invention, the water torture cell, although there is nothing supernatural about it, I am willing to profit the sum of one thousand dollars to anyone who can prove that it is possible to obtain air inside of the torture cell when I'm locked up in it in the regulation manner after it has been filled with water. Should anything go wrong, when I'm locked up, one of my assistants walks to the curtain, ready to rush in, demolishing the glass, allowing the water to flow out in order to save my life. Harry Houdini, October the 29th, 1914, Blackbridge, New York. Mary, you knew my husband a long time. Oh, yes, madame. And you remember what he always said about these things? That it was impossible for the dead to return. This proves he was right. For if it would have been possible, I would have had some sign from him in the past ten years.